everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Vanessa and I make lots of bookish and writing related content. So if that's something you're into, stick around and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I plot and outline my serial project. This is the first time that I've plotted and outlined this much. I'm usually not a plotter. Um, I'm usually, I used to be a hardcore panther. I will just dive into the story and write by the seat of my pants. Over the years, I've become more of a planter, kind of in between where I'll start with the general outline of the story, but then I just start writing and keep going. So this is the first time I feel like I've actually done a lot more plotting in the beginning. Um, it's still not as detailed and as outlined as a lot of hardcore plotters out there, but I figured I would show you my process. And for those of you who don't know, the serial project that I have that I'm working on is called the As A Witches. And it's a YA paranormal serial, which a serial is different than a book series, which I'll get into that um, in a minute. But it's got vampires and witches and uh, werewolves and kind of think TVD vibe. Um, TVD was my inspiration for this story, so that and the originals, those are two of my favorite shows. So they were kind of the inspiration for this world. So like I said, this is a serial, which is different than a book series. So a serial, the best way I've heard it described, is it's like a TV show but in book form. With the serial, there are different episodes that make up a season, and each episode is a shorter piece of fiction or work. And so for my serial project for the Essay Witches, I plan on having four episodes in the first season, and each episode will probably be around 20 to 25,000 words and then all together each episode will probably become like a full novel length once you box them all together. So anyway I thought I'd show you today how I plot and outline my serial project especially because I tend to do it a bit differently than most other plotters that I know. I know a lot of people when they plot or outline their story, they follow, you know, either the story beats or the three act or five act structure. Um, and they have like the, this is the opening scene, this is the hook, this is the inciting incident and so on and so on. My brain thinks differently. So I, like I said, I've never been a plotter before so I basically just think in scenes and moments and chapters so basically my outline is just bullet points with notes of what's going on in each scene uh, scene by scene kind of what I'm gonna get into and I'll show you a bit more so I'm gonna switch over to my computer and I'll share my computer screen so you guys can see that and see what I'm looking at. Okay guys so I'm sharing with you my computer screen and this is my Scrivener. It's what I use for all my writing projects. And so as you can see I have everything here under research. I've got my brainstorm slash brain dump of ideas kind of had a general outline um, that I started with a um, little bit of world building which I'll get into and then I have the outline for each episode 
um, episodes one through four. And then I have my character profiles of my main characters, side characters, and antagonists. And I will kind of show you my outline for the first episode. I'll show you kind of half of the outline for the first episode. I don't want to show too much because I don't want to share any spoilery type stuff. So this is pretty much the outline of my episode one. And like I said, I just do bullet points of notes, what's going to happen scene by scene. Uh, Becca meets Charles at the hospital. They kind of attack each other. Um, she, Becca, which I will get into when I get into my character profiles, but Becca is a witch. Charles is a vampire. Of course, natural enemies. So, um, she goes to the hospital. She's tracking a vamp. She goes to the hospital, see Charles there. They attack each other, except Charles is not the typical vamp you would expect. So he actually uh, brings Becca back to his place and heals her up. Um, they talk for a while, Becca, once Becca wakes up, they talk for a while. And she discovers that he is not the vamp that she's looking for, so she's kind of back to square one. Charles then offers to help Becca find the killer that she's looking for. She declines because she doesn't trust him. Um, and then she goes home and has this conversation with the aunt, tells her what happened um, at the hospital, leaving out the part about Charles. Becca gives her aunt, Sophia, the ring that she took from the evidence lockup. So I should back up a little bit. Where we're starting at, at in the story is Becca is investigating a series of murders, vampire-related murders, and she's kind of been investigating that. So the ring that she got was from the latest crime scene, you know, the cops put it in their evidence lockup. She stole it from there. So that's where we're starting off. It'll make more sense in the actual story. Like this is just a rough draft where I'm just jotting down ideas of what's going on scene by scene. So for me in my head, I already know what's going to happen. So I don't need to write down every single last detail for this to make sense but i do realize that for you guys watching this video um some of this might be a bit confusing because like i said i don't write down every single last detail because i know what's going to happen but it'll make sense once the story is written. Yeah, so Becca gives the ring to her Aunt Sophie. And when Sophie touches the ring, she has a vision of Becca as a heretic. Some of the terminology and vocab within the outline and brainstorm and everything, those are going to change. So I have words in here like heretic and originals. Obviously, like I said, my inspiration came from TVD and the originals, so I used some of their terminology when I was brainstorming and outlining, but I do plan on coming up with my own terms for these eventually, but that's what I'm using for now. Sophie touches the ring, she has a vision of Becca as a heretic, which if you haven't watched TVD, basically heretics are witch vampire hybrids. She tells Becca her vision, but she hides that part of her vision. Sophie rushes off to see her friend Lydia, 
and tells Lydia what happened and tells her about her vision. Meanwhile, Charles goes to his family crypt, and there we are introduced to Hannah, our main antagonist of the series this season. So that is where I will stop, and the rest I want to leave as kind of a surprise, but you can kind of get a sense of how I do my outlines from there. So now we get to my character profiles. Um, and I have each character here. So I'll kind of show you a little bit of how I do the character profiles. So we'll start with Becca. The template for these character profiles are ones that I got from Bethany Wang, author Bethany Wang. She created these templates and have them available on her website. So I will leave a link to that in the description below. But I pretty much use her templates um, she created, which goes over, you know, the basics of the character, the backstory, their goals, their arc, relationships, other, um, and in their words. So there are different sections. And I believe she has a whole video that explains her character templates. I can't remember if that video was just for her Patreon members or if it's up on her YouTube channel. If it's up on her YouTube channel, then I will leave the link to that video down below. But this is my uh, main character, Becca, and she's a main character. I have a little bit of the in her Enneagram. I'm pretty sure she's going to be a type 8, the challenger. So she's stubborn, willful, defiant, um, doesn't like being told what to do. She's a witch. Her power is time manipulation, so she can fast forward, rewind, or stop time, um, but only up to 48 hours. So her physical appearance, she's 19, brown skin, dark brown hair, with blue streaks, brown eyes, break the mark on the back of her left shoulder, kind of looks like a bird. Her uniform or what she typically uh, wears, jeans, boots, and a t-shirt. And so one thing I sometimes do for characters is I will either look at Pinterest or Google some images of actresses and actors that I think kind of fit what I'm picturing the character in my head. And so when I went to Google, I saw this picture of Zendaya. Immediately this picture, the way she looked and kind of her attitude in the picture, I was like, I'm pretty sure this is my Becca, if only she had blue streaks in her hair. So for some of my characters, some of the pictures are like spot on. As soon as I saw them online, I was like, oh, that's definitely this character. And some of them are more like kind of close, but maybe not exactly my character. So then we have the backstory is the next section, which I'm kind of going to skip for now. Because it does include some spoilery stuff. So I'll go on to her goals. And her goals are she wants revenge on the demon that killed her parents. Motivation is, you know, justice for her parents. And, avoid f not, and to avoid feeling weak and not in control. The rest of these I don't really have completed. So with my character profiles, I don't complete every section right at the beginning because um, some stuff I know at the beginning and some stuff I won't figure out or discover 
until I start writing the draft. Um, a lot of this I have blank for now. I do have her key relationships are her aunt, Sophie, Sophia, which she moved to live with her aunt after her parents' death when she was 17. And then her best friends are Ryan and Andy. So that's pretty much all I have for Becca here. So this is Charles Carmichael. His story will, he will eventually become the love interest of Becca. I tend to like the um, enemies to lovers trope. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And it's a very slow burn romance, so that's typically what I like best, so that's what I'm doing. So eventually he'll become a love interest. For now he's kind of like a minor character. He's a vampire. Physically he looks about 25, but he's actually been alive for 1,432 years. Uniform, typically jeans, and a leather jacket. This is the actor that I kind of featured for Charles. He wasn't exactly how I'm picturing, but I really went with this with this one because of his eyes. I think the eyes are spot on. Charles was kind of a hard one to find a picture for, but this was as close as I could come up with. Key relationships, his siblings, Hannah and Leah, and future love, Becca. So Hannah Carmichael is our main antagonist. Uh, she's a vampire, she looks 34, but she's really 1,441 years old. She's pretty stylish and wears heels. And this is the picture I have. For Hannah, it's Scarlett Johansson. And when I saw this picture, immediately I was like, yep, that's Hannah. Then we have Liam Keller. He's our other antagonist. He's working with Hannah, sort of friends with benefits, him and Hannah. And Liam is actually half witch, half demon. He's 27. Typical uniform, dark suit, no tie. This is another one when I saw him, I was immediately like, yep, and that's Liam. Especially, again, with the suit, no tie. And then the hair, like, his hair is pretty much how I was picturing Liam's hair. And then the smile also did it for me. So then we have Leah Carmichael. And she's our other antagonist. She's Hannah's little sister. She's a vampire. She looks 21, but she's actually 1,428 years old. Usually in a miniskirt, blouse, and cute shoes. And this is kind of who I have pictured as Leah, sort of. Leah was not the one that was a little bit trickier to find. I, don't know, I think this is as close as I would get. Key relationships, her siblings, Charles and Hannah. Then we have Andy, Adrian Lemire, aka Andy. She's our side character and best friends of Becca and Ryan. She is a witch. Her power is telekinesis. And dark brown skin, auburn hair, dark brown eyes. She's 18. And then she's normally wearing jeans, tank top, or t shirts, and sneakers. And so this was kind of what I found for Andy. This is another one where, again, it's not exactly what I pictured. Like, this is her hair, is what I'm picturing um but andy is much darker skin then her relationship key relationships are her father james laurent he's not her bio dad but he's been in her life um since she was a baby and 
treats him like a bio dad. Her best friends, Rebecca and Ryan. So those are her key relationships. Okay, next is Ryan. Ryan Reyes. He's a side character. Becca and Andy's best friend. He is a werewolf. 19 Cuban. His uniform are shorts and camouflage slash army style shirts like in the picture that's who I have for Ryan. His key relationships is grandfather Tom, his little brother Nathan, and his best friends Andy and Becca. Then the last character I have so far is Sophia. Minor character Becca's aunt. She's a witch. Her power is premonition. She's 36 and uniform jeans or pants blouse and flats. This is the picture that I have for Sophia and so I saw this picture and it was like something about her smile and her eyes say Sophia to me. So um, this is pretty much who I'm picturing. Her key relationships, her niece Becca and best friend slash lover Lydia Sophia is a queer character. Her and her friend Lydia, we won't see too much of their relationship in this season, but maybe in future seasons um, we'll see more of that. So that's pretty much all I have for each of my character profiles so far, and then as far as the world building goes, I have a little bit about werewolves, you know, their strengths, weaknesses, powers, vampires, their strengths, weaknesses, powers, witches have some stuff about them with their powers and stuff, and then a little bit on demons. So I kind of have the basics of each of the supernatural creatures so far. So I do need to, you know, figure out more of the world and especially the magic system. So that's it, you guys. That's basically how I prep and outline for my serial project. I'm super excited for NaNoWriMo this year because I am just, the words are already flowing for me. Um, working on the outline, I just had so many ideas and, you know, I'm thinking of conversations that the characters are having in my head and I'm just like so ready to get it down on paper. So I'm totally ready for Nano this year and hopefully it goes according to plan and it works out really well. But I'm super excited. Speaking of NaNoWriMo, if you guys haven't heard yet, I've actually created a few new designs for my shop, Novel Creations. And a couple of them are NaNoWriMo inspired designs. So I'll put some pictures up here of what they look like. But I have one that's a shirt that says 50,000 words, 30 days challenge accepted that's the front of the shirt and on the back it says NaNoWriMo and then the second shirt it says I survived NaNoWriMo with the typewriter in the middle of it so definitely go to my shop and check out these designs I'll leave the link in the description below um, so I have these designs on some shirts hoodies and also some tote bags so definitely go check those out if you're interested but yeah that's it for this video and if you are doing NaNoWriMo this year let me know in the comments below what story you're working on this year I'd love to know and I'd love to connect with you about it so let me know and that's it for now guys so if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I post new videos every other Thursday, so I will see you guys soon. Bye!